Now we'll discuss connecting your weather station console to your computer. So this console is meant to go in your classroom and it receives data wirelessly from the weather station on your roof. So um, you'll want to locate this near to your, to your um, ozone monitoring station with your computer so you can connect them together. So the first thing that you'll need is you'll need to open this box and in it you will find this little data logger and this cord. So what you do is after you've set up your weather station console, which is uh, part of the directions in your Davis package, you just need to set the date and the time. And then you'll go into the back, open up the back. We've uh, sent you C batteries so you can put your batteries in. It's also um, able to be plugged in so you can use battery or um, your power source. And this data logger will fit nicely right in there. And you want to make sure it's, it's securely in there. And then once you have that connected, you can put this lid back on. And this little guy will plug into this end of this cord. So you just plug that in there. And then this will plug into a serial to USB converter. You need this because you've already used your serial port for your ozone monitor. So you'll plug this into here. And then this gets plugged into your computer. So at this stage, we have both the ozone monitor and the weather station connected to the computer. Now, if you don't have your weather station yet, it's okay. You can, you just will skip this step and you'll go to the data collection step. But we will talk about um, data collection in the next tutorial video and how you actually use the program to collect your data. So the last step we'll show here is how to set the ozone monitor on 10 second averaging. Right now it's, um, well, eventually you'll put it on 15 minute averaging. So that means that it will upload a data point every 15 minutes. But when you're first getting it set up, you won't want to wait 15 minutes to figure out if it's working or not. So you'll want to put it on 10 second averaging. So we'll go ahead and plug in the ozone monitor and we'll turn it on. To access the ozone monitor's menu, you press and hold the black button to the right. And you'll see menu come up. So we're going to change the averaging, like we said, to 10 second averaging, which means it'll throw a data point every 10 seconds. So you want to scroll so your cursor is over AVG. And click once to select AVG. All right, now your scroll, uh, your cursor is on the frequency. So let's say it was on 15 minutes. You would just click once to change it and then scroll over to 10 seconds and click once to select that frequency. And then to exit out of the menu, which is really important because it won't, it won't send any data if it's still in the menu, you definitely need to exit out of the menu. You go over to this um, little carrot over here have your cursor on that, click once, that gets you to the menu above the one we were just in, and click another time, and that will get you out of the menu. And when you see O3 equals, that's when you know you're in the right menu. So then, at this point, you'll want to look, watch the data collection tutorial. Now we'll be talking about a, a maintenance step that you'll need to do with your monitor about once a month. And that is called zeroing your monitor. So this little guy right here is an ozone scrubber. So the material inside here called Hopgolite destroys ozone. And um, when you put this on the back of your instrument, uh, the instrument will read air with 
no ozone in it because it's been destroyed in this in this uh, hot plate scrubber here. So what you'll do is you'll remove the tubing um, from your ozone monitor that goes to the outside air and you'll replace it with your scrubber. So go ahead and connect your scrubber to the back of your ozone monitor to the inlet and make sure that you have it on 10 second averaging and also make sure that you've had it running for at least a half an hour to, to stabilize the readings. So this is now, um, the ozone monitor is now sucking in air that has been, the ozone has been scrubbed out of it. So what it should be reading is about zero. Now sometimes ozone monitors can have non-zero offsets. So that's what we're correcting for. If we see an offset, we'll correct for that in the ozone monitors menu. So when you come around and you start to see your reading settle down, you're going to want to average 10 points. So take 10 points, figure out the average, and if that number is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, you're going to need to adjust your monitor settings. So let's say, for example, we have a negative 5 offset. Okay, so your, the average of your readings is about negative 5. So what you'll want to do is uh, give it a plus 5 offset because you're wanting to bring it to 0. So the same case applies, let's say you had a plus 5 offset, you would need to bring it down 5 to 0. So that's going to determine your, um, what you set your offset. So you're going to go into the menu over to CFG, click once, going to go into CAL, C-A-L, click once, go over to O3, and this ozone monitors, this Z is the offset. So this ozone monitors offset is zero. So in my example, we said that it had a negative five offset when we zeroed it. So you select this once to change it, and then I'm gonna put a plus five in there because I wanna bring plus five minus five down to zero. Now, some ozone monitors will have, let's say, a two to start with because that's what they needed when they are calibrated initially. So let's say my ozone monitor had an offset of 2 already, then I would need to bring this up to 7 so that we got back to 0. Alright, and then click once to uh, change, uh, keep your selection. Go back over, exit out of the menu until you're at the very main menu and you have um, an ozone reading. Okay, included in your ozone monitor's um, package is actually a battery for the ozone monitor. So it's in this box. When you bring out all the parts, you'll see the battery pack, the charger, and then the cord that you connect it to the ozone monitor with. So you'll take the battery pack, you'll connect the cord once it's charged, connect the cord to it, and then this plugs into your ozone monitor. So with a fully charged battery, you should get about seven hours of ozone monitoring time. You want to use a fully charged battery to make your measurements. Uh, you'll get the, the best measurements that way. And you charge it with this. Uh, we recommend not charging it unattended because the battery is a very high performance battery and it is a best practice to charge it while you're, um, while you're around. You wouldn't want to leave it overnight when no one is around. So charging the battery, you just plug that in, plug this into the battery pack, and charge it while uh, you're around.